Yes, a miraculous drink actually exists, and it is matcha. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Matcha is a very important kind of tea in Japan because of its relationship with the culture of tea ceremony. Drinking matcha might be on your to do list when you come to Japan. But why does it have to be matcha that's drunk in the tea ceremony? How is matcha different from other kinds of tea that makes it so famous? So, today, as a tea ceremony trainee in Kyoto, I will explain everything you need to know about matcha, including what kind of tea it is, its history in Japan, and its health benefits. I will also introduce some delicious ways to enjoy matcha at home, from the basic way done in tea ceremonies to more casual ways to drink it in an easier to consume form. You may have an image that matcha is a bitter kind of tea, but I'm sure this video will make you want to start drinking it. Every day. And even if you get confused somewhere during the middle, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. So, let's go to the next video. Let's go to e n first, let's talk about what matcha is and how it is different from other types of tea. According to the Japan Tea Central Association, the definition of matcha is fine tea powder that is created by grinding tea leaves with mills. The tea leaves are cultivated under the shade and dried without being rubbed. I'm sure this doesn't make too much sense. So let's take a closer look at the three fundamental steps on how matcha is made. One, Cultivate the tea leaves under the shade for about two to three weeks. Two, steam, then dry in an all brink furnace. Three, remove the stems, leave veins, and grind with stone mills. One, cultivate the tea leaves under the shade for about two to three weeks. One of the biggest differences between other kinds of tea and matcha is that they use sheets like this. To cover the tea leaves for about two to three weeks before they are picked. This is meant to avoid direct sunlight, which helps to keep the leaves soft with plenty of umami ingredients inside. This procedure, of course, takes time and effort, which is why it is not done for all kinds of tea leaves. The leaves that grow up with direct sunlight will have more catechin but less thanin, making the taste. Bitter. Two, steam then dry in an all brick furnace. The leaves that have been picked will quickly be taken to the factories to be steamed and dried. First, the steaming procedure prevents the leaves from oxidizing, which helps it maintain its beautiful green color. By the way, if you let the leaves oxidize on purpose, You will be able to create tea such as oolong tea and black tea. Second, the drying procedure that takes place in the brick drying ovens like this brings out the leaves' gorgeous scents. Three, remove the stems, leaf veins, and grind with stone mills. After the leaves are completely dried, they are broken down into small pieces about five millimeters in size. And the stems and veins of the leaves are removed at this point. From here, they will use stone mills like this to grind the tea leaves into the fine powder matcha, which the particles are said to be only about 5 to 10 microns. But doesn't stone mills sound like a tool from ancient times? Why don't they just use machines? This is because matcha is very sensitive to heat. And the beautiful colors and nutrition s can be easily damaged from it. By the way, one stone mill on average can only produce about 40 grams of matcha at a time. So now I think you can understand that although matcha is a kind of green tea, the prices are more expensive because the manufacturing methods are unique and it's difficult to produce mass amounts at once. 
However, the enormous amount of time and effort that the tea farmers put in to making matcha is the secret to its rich flavor and multiple health benefits. Then next, let's take a look at the history of matcha in Japan to understand why it's still so important in Japanese culture. 1. Brought back from China to Japan by a great Zen monk. 2. Becomes popular among samurai as a way to practice Zen. 3. Becomes an enjoyable flavor for drinks and desserts for anyone. 1. Brought back from China to Japan by a great Zen monk. It is believed that matcha was first born in China in the 10th century, and it was first brought to Japan by a great Buddhist monk called Yosai in the end of the 12th century. Yosai is the founder of a Zen sect that still exists in Japan today. While he was studying in China, he learned that the monks there were drinking tea as a way to keep themselves healthy and to endure their hard trainings. He helped to spread the culture of matcha in Japan by publishing the first book about the health benefits and ways of drinking tea. He also helped the shogun who was suffering from a hangover by offering him some matcha. Matcha began to be produced in many places in Kyoto, including Uji, which is the most famous city for matcha production today. By the way, matcha is literally like magic when you have hangovers. So I hope you can try it sometime too. 2. Becomes popular among samurai as a way to practice Zen. Coming into the Muromachi period that followed, drinking matcha became popular not only among the aristocrats and Zen monks, but also among the samurai and commoners. The gambling games of drinking multiple kinds of tea and trying to guess the good or bad quality or the place of production became popular. And also gorgeous tea parties using imported expensive Chinese tableware were held. Drinking matcha spread quickly as this was the most advanced culture brought in from a foreign country at that time. It's kind of like when the Beatles were a thing all around the world and every Japanese became crazy about them too. However, once gambling was banned by the government and the era came into the Sengoku period of war, the culture of tea gradually began to change. The idea of drinking matcha as a way to practice Zen was established, which is the beginning of Wabicha, the tea ceremony culture we know of today. All of the gambling and fanciness were gone, and it became a very sophisticated and simple ceremony where the participants can calm their minds and reflect on themselves. This is my speculation, but I believe that matcha was used instead of other kinds of tea, probably because matcha is a high-grade tea that uses the most amount of time and effort to produce and it suited the idea of tea ceremony that seeks ultimate omoterashi for their guests. But why would such a quiet, maybe even boring ceremony become so popular among samurai? It is because the time was during the turbulent Sengoku era, with many wars that happened for about 150 years. The samurai were constantly under the pressure of being attacked or killed in war. So joining the tea ceremony was one of the very few occasions for them to relax and enjoy a moment of peace. Samurai leaders like the three heroes of the Sengoku era loved tea ceremony too, and used it politically by giving their subordinates rare tea utensils as rewards, increasing the value of the ceremonies. Eventually, in the Edo period, after the wars were over, the government held and approved tea ceremonies as official events, and it became a kind of basic education for the samurai. While almost every traditional culture faced crises of survival, once Japan westernized in the late 19th century, tea ceremonies were still thought of as something that you most certainly must learn among politicians and businessmen. 
so you can understand how deeply drinking matcha is rooted in the Japanese people throughout history. 3. Becomes an enjoyable flavor for drinks and desserts for anyone. Today, matcha is not only enjoyed at tea ceremonies, but it's popular at cafes and restaurants, being mixed with milk, sugar, and even with carbonated water for its delicious taste. Matcha-flavored ice creams and cakes have become something as common as vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. I've had some people asking me if it's rude to drink matcha while adding different ingredients to it, but no, it's not a problem at all. You can drink it in any style you like, just like all the other styles of tea. However, during the tea ceremony, you will only drink plain matcha with hot water with no extra ingredients. This aligns with the philosophy of tea ceremony, where you appreciate nature and its original state. If you'd like to learn more about the purpose of tea ceremony, I've made this video, so please go ahead and check it out. Now finally, let's start talking about today's main topic, the health benefits of drinking matcha. The secret to matcha being so healthy is again, because of the difficult procedures to make them that take time and effort. Another reason is because you drink the grinded tea leaves directly, which is something different from the other kinds of tea, where you only steep the tea leaves in water. I've broken the health benefits down into five points. One, catechin has antioxidant effects and suppresses the rise in blood sugar levels. Two, Thanin has relaxation effects and increases stress tolerance. 3. Vitamin C protects your skin. 4. Caffeine increases concentration and prevents dementia. 5. Looting absorbs blue light and protects your eyes. Matcha has twice the amount of catechin and 10 times more thanin than regular green tea. The catechin in tea suppresses the absorption of fat you consume and helps your body burn more fat and prevents illnesses such as diabetes. The moment you drink matcha, you will notice the relaxation effects of thanin, and it just makes you want to take a deep breath and close your eyes. You will immediately understand how it helped the samurai to find a short moment of peace in their lives too. Vitamin C has anti-aging effects by protecting your skin. But not only vitamin C, but there are plenty of others, like vitamin A, E, and K that also have multiple health benefits. The caffeine increases your concentration and prevents you from getting dementia. Don't worry Shogo, I get plenty of caffeine for my daily coffee routine. Yes, coffee also has caffeine and many health benefits. But the caffeine in matcha is a bit different. The thanin included with the matcha also has the effect of suppressing the excitatory action of caffeine. So this is why although matcha has almost the same amount of caffeine as coffee, you feel more relaxed than feeling hyper. Finally, ludin absorbs blue light that is emitted from computers and smartphones and protects your eyes. I know many of you use devices for work all the time like I do, so matcha is helpful for modern business people. So to make a long story short, drinking matcha will raise your stress tolerance and concentration while protecting your skin and eyes, help keep your body in shape, and prevent multiple diseases such as diabetes and dementia. Yes, a miraculous drink actually exists, and it is matcha. I know that almost everyone is gone now to start looking for matcha on Amazon, but I'd like to introduce some simple ways on how to enjoy drinking matcha at home. I'll demonstrate these three ways. One, hot matcha using a whisk. Two, cold matcha using a plastic bottle. Three, matcha beer. One, hot matcha using a whisk. So this is the kind of matcha that is enjoyed at tea ceremonies, 
but we aren't going to do all the fixed movements along with it, but just the tea making. What you need are these three items. One, a bowl. Two, a tea whisk. Three, hot water. You may not have the tea whisk at home. It's an item that is used during the tea ceremony too, in order to mix the matcha powder completely. I'm sure you can find one on Amazon. The cheapest ones are only about 10 US dollars. It's actually made from just one piece of bamboo, and there are still professional craftsmen who make them. I'll stop here and talk about the utensils in another video. They're really interesting to learn about too. The bowl can be anything as long as it's wide enough to stir the matcha with your whisk. The hot water is best at about 80 degrees Celsius. As I explained earlier, the heat of boiling water will destroy the nutrition in the matcha. The tea strainer is best to use to avoid the matcha from forming lumps. But even if you don't have it, it won't be a major problem. Now, let's actually start making it. 1. Pour hot water into the bowl and put the tea whisk inside. This is to warm the bowl so that the matcha doesn't cool too fast and to moisten the whisk. If you use the whisk when it's dry, there is a high chance that the tips will break off. 2. Pour the hot water out and dry the bowl. Once the bowl is warm enough, pour the hot water out and dry the bowl completely with a paper towel or towel. 3. Put 1.7 to 2 gram of matcha into the bowl. I'm using a tea scoop that's used at a tea ceremony, but it can be any kind of spoon you have at home. 4. Pour about 50 to 70 milliliters of hot water into the bowl and whisk until there is enough foam on the surface. I'm sure it's very difficult to know how much 50 to 70 milliliters is. So in the beginning, you can measure it. Or just simply try it out a few times to see what's best for you. Hold the tea whisk gently with three fingers. Put it into the hot water as you hold the bowl with your other hand. Keep your wrists flexible and your shoulders relaxed. And imagine drawing M's inside the bowl. The foam that appears on the surface of the matcha tells you that it's ready to drink. Lastly, keep in mind that you don't have to shake the whisk after use. Just gently lift it and stand it again, and you'll notice that it's made so the foam stops at the tip of the whisk and doesn't drop. And now your matcha is ready. If you like to, you can add milk, sugar, or ice to enjoy them in different ways. But I'll go for the plain way. Yes. It's very good. 2. Cold matcha using a plastic bottle. This is something that I've never tried before in my life. But I found the information on the internet, so I'd like to try. You just need a plastic bottle, paper, or something to put the matcha into the bottle, and cold water. The good part about this way is that you don't need a tea whisk. You simply need an empty bottle. One. Put about 1.7 to 2 gram of matcha into the bottle. I decided to use a sheet of paper as it was introduced in the article. 2. Pour about 200 milliliters of cold water into the bottle and shake it. You have to shake it quite a lot to prevent the matcha from forming lumps. Just like the way we made it earlier, it's ready when there's foam on the surface. 3. Pour it out in any kind of glass you like. If you want it extra cold, you can put some ice into the cup in advance. You can add milk or sugar too if you'd like. I'll try it with some milk. It's not bad, but I personally prefer drinking hot matcha though. 3. Matcha beer No guys, I'm not excited to do this, not at all. No. I've tried matcha beer at a isakaya bar before, but never at home. So this is going to be my first try. But it's nothing difficult at all. You just replace the water with beer, and the way to make it is the same as the ones before. It's best you have 3 gram worth of matcha to 300 milliliters of beer. By the way, I found many people say that white beer goes even better with matcha. So I have my favorite ebisu white beer. 
So, I made the matcha in the first way that I introduced. You put the matcha first into the glass that you're going to be using, and then slowly the beer next. You mix them together and it's done. It's very easy to make. Now, let's see how it tastes. It's not bad nor good, actually. Um, there's no reason for me to say that it tastes really bad, but I would just probably enjoy the matcha and the beer separately. By the way, it's best to enjoy matcha two to three times a day maximum, and not too late during the day, just like how you would drink coffee. It does differ depending on how you get along with caffeine though. Any matcha that's left for you to drink on a different day, please seal the bag it's in and keep it in the refrigerator. Even so, matcha will only last about two to four weeks, depending on the environment after bags are first opened. So it's best you drink it as soon as possible. If you have any other questions about enjoying matcha, please let me know in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Matcha is made by the following three fundamental steps. One, cultivate the tea leaves under the shades for about two to three weeks. Two, steam, then dry in an all brick furnace. Three, remove the stems, leaf veins, and grind with stone mills. The enormous amount of time and effort that the tea farmers put into making matcha is the secret to its rich flavor and multiple health benefits. The history of matcha can be broken down into three main points. One, brought back from China to Japan by a great Zen monk. Two, becomes popular among samurai as a way to practice Zen. Three, becomes an enjoyable flavor for drinks and desserts for anyone. You can understand that drinking matcha has a history of about 800 years in Japan and tea ceremony is deeply rooted in the Japanese culture. The five main health benefits of matcha are 1. Catechin has antioxidant effects and suppresses the rise in blood sugar levels. 2. Thanin has relaxation effects and increases stress tolerance. 3. Vitamin C protects your skin. 4. Caffeine increases concentration and prevents dementia. Five. Looting absorbs blue light and protects your eyes. Could such a miraculous drink exist? Yes, it's matcha. Please try drinking matcha at home. It's nothing difficult, and it's not rude to add ingredients like milk and sugar to fill your taste. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video made you want to start drinking right away, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. And please, check out our sub-channel and membership in the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. どうもありがとうございました。Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video and welcome to the Omake Talk. So, for those of you who have stayed till the very end for the Omake Talk, I believe I haven't answered probably one of the questions you still have in mind. How do I know if that matcha is good or not, right? So, for example, if you go on Amazon or any like these websites where you can buy things online, if you look up matcha, you'll you'll probably find a lot of different brands and um, different kinds of matcha that are uh, made in different places, you know, even in Japan or outside of Japan and such. And to be honest, it's very very difficult. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's it's very scary. Like for me, I always buy a matcha that's about 1,600 yen for 40 gram. 
of 1,600 yen for about 40 grams. So that's about like the, well, I think that's rather the cheaper kind of matcha. It's for, for me to drink daily. So it's at least that expensive though. So it's not cheap at all, right? But um, there are, for example, like on the internet, if you can go on the internet, there's like uh, four kilo, just 1,000 yen or something. So definitely these this kind of matcha are fake or either produced in a different way than the proper way that's determined, you know, the one they explained about what matcha really is, right? So anyways, it's a little bit difficult. Yes, it's really difficult for me to say because even if the prices are expensive, it doesn't mean it's always authentic, right? So I do have one um, good idea for you, actually. If you can take a look at the description box of this video, I originally used to work in Kyoto, a company called Camellia, which is actually a tea ceremony. Uh, they ran a tea ceremony facility where you get to experience tea ceremony in a short amount of time. They recently started this matcha subscription thing where if you subscribe and you, ha you have an account there, they will send you monthly of your that month's matcha. And I would definitely um, guarantee you the matcha, the quality of the matcha. And they'll also probably send you the whisk at the very beginning and um, tea sweets along with it too. So this is definitely recommended. If, you're, if you don't know which one to order, I hope you can take a look at the description box to take it out. Yes, the Hamidia's matcha subscription system. And by the way, um, I'm not um, getting money or them or not sponsoring anything. I'm just recommending it because I think it's it's probably the best ideas I know of so far. All right. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.